Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at a GOTO 6 centimeter telescope. I don't know the exact designation of this scope. It's uh, a little bit mysterious. Here's a picture of the label on the box. If anyone can read that and let me know what it means, I would sure appreciate it. Uh, but as far as I know, I'm just going to call it a 6 centimeter telescope. So this telescope probably dates from the 1970s. So let's have a look at this and let's compare this with other another GOTO telescope. Let's have a closer look at uh, some of the features of this mount. Uh, got a kind of a typical GOTO handle on the slow motion. The slow motion on this device is on an unusual side. It would usually be mounted on what I would call the right hand side. If you're observing from the rear, you'd hold it with your right hand. This is mounted on the left hand side. Uh, not easily reversible. No way to easily, you have to tear it all apart. You might be able to reverse it, but I believe that's the way it came. Anyway, that's uh, kind of interesting and unusual. This is your typical, very high quality slow motion. And it's got um, a sort of a typical for GOTO kind of a device here where if you want to reverse this to put it on the other side instead of pulling this off as you might do with another mount what you do is you loosen this there's another one back here then you rotate the whole thing like that lock them back down and now your remote control is on the other side rather clever but uh Maybe a little overcomplicated. Anyway, this is just unusual. Typical for GOTO to be very innovative. Uh, all, not all the innovations were successful, <laughs> obviously, but uh, that, is a, that is a fun one. So uh, that, and it has that in common with some other mounts. Here's another sort of semi-interesting feature. Here's your, that's the locking mechanism for the altitude right there. Now this has kind of got a variable. <laughs> okay, so there's how you lock it down. Got the typical uh, GOTO capstan bolt system. Here's your lock for the declination. Also very, very well made. This is all Nice and robust cast iron or cast steel of some sort. Very nice and heavy. You can also move this in azimuth like so very easily. So polar alignment on this thing, although it wouldn't be real precise, would be pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Let's suppose you want to do some photography with this thing. Um, you could remove this little safety bolt here. Mount this guy on. And of course, you're going to want to have your scope aimed You want to have your scope aimed where you want it because on a guide star of some sort because you're not going to move it after that. So you, then you aim your camera. Put your camera on there like that. And now you can uh, open the shutter and do long-term, long-time exposures and track with the thing. So you could do some nice wide field photography with this kind of a mount. This is the way it would look after you got it all set up. You've got your camera mounted over there, the shutter is open. You're down here, you're on a guide, uh, a guide star, so you're just guiding on the guide star and slowly moving. You'd want to probably train yourself to be very smooth with your motions so you get good tracking. Leave the shutter open. I don't know. How long could you stand to do that? 20 minutes? I've done things like that. <laughs> it was not easy. <laughs> Anyone that has used an equatorial telescope knows that sometimes the focuser knob can get into a very odd position. Uh, and the finder. So it's very nice to be able to rotate this thing. And what the GOTO company did was to 
make it so that you can lock this down, rotate this. So you can change this to whatever position might be necessary. Very handy. Uh, for example, got into an awkward position. Something like that. You might want to have this like so. so here's something that indicates uh, um, you know, a kind of a, a reduction in the quality of the telescope. This is plastic here, which uh, definitely indicates Goto was going to plastic pretty darn early. And I don't know why they trusted plastic, but they did. And I don't think it was a necessarily a wise thing to do. But this is at least removable, so you can remove this. Uh, and they, they've got metal inserts here. This is plastic, so they put metal inserts there. Seems like, well, why didn't you just make it metal from the from the get-go? It would have been much easier. But uh, anyway, that's the way that is. And this finder, I don't think this finder changed very much over the entire history of Goto making telescopes. Finders are pretty much all identical, just like that. The balancing mechanism for this thing well, it's the scope in case you have, you know, heavier eyepieces or lighter eyepieces or whatever. You've got this device here and it's, uh, you know, innovative, maybe somewhat overcomplicated. Nobody else adopted it, <laughs> but uh, that doesn't mean anything necessarily. Anyway, that's the way you would adjust the length of the tube for balance. Uh, now, I've got three different versions of uh, a 60 millimeter telescope. Uh, this one is a, a 60 millimeter F20 model 105, probably from the 1960s. This is a 60 millimeter F15 or so, probably from the 1970s. And this one over here on the end is a 60, mo 60 millimeter uh, model. ST6, probably from the 1980s, um, maybe from the 1970s, a little hard to date these. But, um, the idea here was to show you all of these and compare and contrast them and see how things evolved. You can see a very similar philosophy in everything. Uh, the mount changed dramatically with this last one. Uh, this is an aluminum casting very big difference. This is all cast iron or cast steel of some sort. Uh, so these are both, in that respect, uh, heavier duty. Although I have to tell you, this thing is very strong, perfectly adequate, even though it's thicker, it's aluminum, so everything compensates. It's great. It's wonderful. It's just as good as these. Uh, differences here in terms of uh, the tube is metal here. This one might be plastic. That's for sure plastic, <laughs> kind of a thin plastic. This is plastic, pretty good quality. This is uh, thinner plastic here. This is cheaper plastic. This is heavier duty stuff. This finder mount is plastic. It's pretty good and robust. This one is, uh, Okay, I would say not great. I don't love these these plastic finder mounts um, Not not the best. This one was as a matter of fact required some minor repair. It's easy to break one of these So this one is not so great The finders on the other hand, I believe are all identical. They didn't change to uh, In any significant respect the focusers are pretty much identical. There's some changes here. This one, if you want to rotate it, the whole focuser rotates. This one, if you lo loosen that, it's just the back piece that rotates. Interesting. Uh, this one, I don't believe it will rotate, but only a <laughs> with a hacksaw. So you're not going to rotate that one. Uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, obviously, these mounting systems are quite similar here and here. And this one is a very different beast. Not sure if that's because they went to the aluminum 
maybe it just might be a, a less expensive way to do it. And the slow motion here, they've gone to a tangent here, a tangent kind of an arm, perfectly adequate and just fine for, a, for right ascension, you don't need a whole lot of motion. So a little tangent motion like that is fine, uh, as opposed to a full-fledged all the way around gear that, like we have here. So uh, significant differences in the obvious color differences too. This one uh, went to a kind of a charcoal gray and then to back to a sort of a lighter gray, different finish altogether, a uh, whole different thing. So uh, those are some interesting differences and it shows a little bit of the evolution of the uh, Goto Kogaku telescopes. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this Goto 6 centimeter telescope, probably from about the 1970s. Thank you for watching.